What's up, Curiosity Crew? We got an early morning on our hands again. I mostly do this for the shift Colorado photographers that like to have that early light for the best results possible. But yes, today we are having fun with shift. We're featuring an EV rock crawler, specifically a Jeep Wagoneer which was the first electric rock crawler to complete the Rubicon Trail, which is pretty sweet. I don't know a whole lot about the Rubicon Trail. You can do your own research on it, but from what I understand, that's a pretty impressive accomplishment. So today we're meeting up with the owner, Seth. Their Instagram is Team Squirrel Cage, which I will leave in the description for you to go and check out. But yeah, we're just gonna talk with him about uh, how he built this thing, how the Rubicon Trail experience went, kind of just cover everything from A to Z that we can in our uh, short amount of time that we have today. But yeah, we're meeting up in Lyons, Colorado, and uh, just gonna get some good video, good photo, and uh, this will be in the upcoming issue, issue 13 of Shift Colorado. And that'll be coming out in, I think it's early September, somewhere around there. 2025. So I'll link that in the description as well. But yeah, let's go ahead and check out Seth's EV Rock Crawler. This motor, with all the motor and inverter combo, is actually from a government auction. Because what? in 2005, the government was like, hey, we're going to make all of our airport vehicles electric. <laughs> and dumped a ton of money into that. And then the companies responsible for it basically went under. And then 10 years later, they auctioned everything off with zero documentation. So we got like the motor and the inverter combo for like three thousand dollars, which is this seems like a steal. <laughs> but people are paying. Fifteen to twenty thousand for these kits normally. Yeah. So, with that though, since there's no documentation, lots of challenges to overcome. Totally. And with electric motors, um, you've got to have very precise control for it to feel nice. Mm -hmm. um, there's kind of two buzzwords there: space vector mod modulation and field oriented control. But all that really means is basically how the motor turns. Mm -hmm. And with a internal combustion engine, you, you press the pedal, and that correlates directly to how much power yep. you're outputting. But with an electric motor, the plug to be put through a control system, so you can figure out how much power you're outputting. Hmm. Um, do you have a background in electrical engineering? I do, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had just taken the big field-oriented control class before I took on this project. Okay. And it'd be a, a big undertaking, but I've considered at times just building my own inverter because there's times where I'm like, that'd be so much easier than having to mess with all of the stuff on there. Well, at least you'd know what it was, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that was the challenge with the first one. Exactly. Whenever I see a build like this, my question is always, where did the, where was the inception of this idea? Like, where did it come from to do an electric rock crawler? So, I, you know, I've been doing four wheeling for a long time. Yep. And, uh, we kind of got this harebrained idea that for my 40th birthday we would go run the rubicon trail and we're like well why don't we build a an electric one to do it it doesn't look like that's been done before and uh with all great ideas it was uh ill-conceived <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're the kind of so, brothers that just have ideas and <laughs> take them on without much thinking. That's the best way to <laughs> head first yeah. right into an idea. Yeah. So we ran into a lot of problems, but we uh, we figured a lot of them out too, and yeah. we got it there, and we were able to run the trail. And uh, so, depending on who you talk to, it was a it was a success. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we made it. We yeah. completed the trail, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You made it. You made history. Yeah. And so obviously this is based on a, uh, a Jeep Cherokee, the, you know, the kind of sister to the Wagoneer at the time. They've since changed what the Cherokee is, but 
Uh, and so we, we pulled out the transmission and drivetrain from that essentially. And then uh, I had my machinist friend machine a coupler and an adapter plate for the bell housing to attach the electric motor to the rest of the drivetrain. So it's essentially a standard drivetrain connected to the electric motor. Yeah. It's a T15 transfer case with the Dana 20 or Dana 20 transfer case, T15 uh, transmission. Uh, and then I, I rebuilt most of those things. I rebuilt the Dana 20 to be a twin stick so we could, you can control the front and rear wheels independently. Yep. But, uh, it allowed us to use a lot of the off-the-shelf automotive parts for the drivetrain, and then really the, the new stuff is all the electrics. So, you know what the battery pack weighs on its own? Crazy <laughs> no, guesstimate. I, I, I guesstimate 300 to 350 pounds. That's actually not as bad as I was thinking. So, yeah. I was really worried about weight to begin with because the battery pack isn't as large as a lot of other electric vehicles. Yep. So. My biggest worry was, will we be able to do the whole Rubicon on one charge? <laughs> mm -hmm. The answer was yes and no. We may have been able to push it, but one night it got low enough where we decided to run the internal combustion engine and charge it up. So, so. Sweet. I love the built-in generator. I think that's really <laughs> cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got the belt for that in my car. Eventually I want a, a solution where it's Kind of just attached to the rest of the drivetrain. Yeah. So yep. if I'm on the highway, I can just run this little like go kart motor and just <laughs> keep my car going without that using electric. That would be electric. so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's a crazy part because most engines and 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 that one included the internal combustion are counterclockwise yep. rotation, mm -hmm. but the front belt system on a conventional car turns clockwise, and so that means the power steering pump needs to be turned clockwise while the mo the internal combustion turns counterclockwise so we got to do something to flip that around in the future so he can run them at the same time but, yeah yep. uh for now it's you just flip the the electric motor to a reverse setting and then put a different belt on to go to the internal combustion and then we can charge it yeah it's sweet so that's got like five um, horsepower power steering so that mean you got five horsepower of charging too yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> how fast can you guys take a take a charge off like a level three um the charger i have built into this can do 6.6 .6 kilowatts okay so it's basically so, all level two all the time yeah <laughs> that's right not bad so, this one's level two it's it's maxing out this one yeah I like the collector vehicle plate. I don't know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then what's the next trail that you're going to be the first EV on? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You know, one that would I'll be fun is actually there. right up from here that I, I think we should try is uh, the Coney Creek, Coney Flats loop. That loop is really fun, too. Yeah. yeah. I'm it, sure this would be just fine out there. Yeah. It's more of a range thing than anything up yeah. there. Well, <laughs> you know, it's about... Uh, uh, five, <laughs> ten miles for the loop, I would say. So yeah. this should be fine. I'm Seth Myers. And I'm Josh Myers. Nice. And what did you bring for us today? This is kind of our COVID project. Um, we converted an old Jeep to electric to run the Rubicon Trail. Nice. Yep, based on a 1979 Jeep Cherokee. Nice. Um, and when did you do the Rubicon Trail? That was roughly uh, June 2021. Nice. Um, June, yeah. What was your biggest challenge in this build? Honestly, trying to mate the two systems, at least I thought, because yeah. we had the full electric and then we had the, you know, all the custom normal incom internal combustion engine parts. Uh, and then... We had to figure out how to make them all work together. One example is our power steering. Um, he was responsible for that at first and bought a full hydro power steering kit. And then we kind of had the realization that uh, if we're not moving, our engine isn't turning, we won't have power steering. So we had to come up with a solution and ended up installing a whole second motor to just run the power steering. Nice. Yeah, definitely. There's no uh, 
aftermarket support for mating a uh, an electric motor to a old Jeep transmission. So we we had to make our own support and uh, machine some of our own parts and mm-hmm. figure out couplers and things like that. And that that probably was the hardest part. Yeah. So probably quite a bit so, of fabrication. Yep. That's right. Nice. <laughs> uh, lots of fabrication. Very cool. And then on the Rubicon Trail itself, um, did you guys run into any issues during that experience or anything that kind of threw you off? Oh, we did, yeah. for sure. The, so it, it was kind of its first time out, or it was its first time out, and uh, there were issues with the suspension. We had to, it, it was a little tilty. Anyone that has designed a double triangulated four length knows that. Uh, if you set it too high, you wind up with excessive body roll. And so, uh, one thing that I didn't understand is where the CG was going to be the center of gravity when we built it. And so I had designed it around a standard internal combustion engine where the weight sits a little bit lower and you don't have a whole rack of batteries. And so that made it a little tilty and we had to lower things down and, and cut some, some fenders off on the trail to make it work. And then I think there were a few issues with the electrics that set the injury. Yep. The biggest one, just for a technical challenge, was how the throttle operates so much differently than internal combustion. Uh, you're, you're applying a constant torque no matter what, and you can't just let off the throttle because then it basically goes into neutral too. Um, so it kind of just takes some getting used to. And then after that, it was uh, the biggest problem was just worrying about how much charge we had on the trail. Speaking of that, what's the general range that you have with it? Depends on what we're doing. For the Rubicon Trail, we probably went through one and a quarter battery packs. Um, We had to charge a little bit about halfway through the trail. But I haven't done a big highway drive, but I suspect about 100 miles. Nice. And so it's a, about a 30 kilowatt hour battery pack. And, uh, you know, they I think they give range ratings in terms of kilowatt hours per mile now. Uh, definitely in low range, it's a lot less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nice thing about having a, a real transmission with a electric motor, too, is we can kind of switch gears to turn the uh, electric motor to operate it the most optimal efficiency kind of the same way you would with internal combustion but a little bit different gotcha um as far as like the frame itself did you guys custom build that or was it based on another chassis the frame was rebuilt and then he did most of the welding to do um build in all of the uh roll cage components here nice so there uh 1979 cherokee there was a significant amount of rust, and so there were places in the frame rails that we actually cut out and refabricated in and had to refabricate some mounts, especially for the electric motor. It doesn't mount the same way. And then uh, some new bumpers and things like that. So there was some uh, fabrication element to the frame itself. Nice. I think some is a bit of an understatement. But <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you guys to like assemble it and put it all together? We did have that deadline to go on the Rubicon Trail by his birthday, and it was ambitious, but we managed to do it in in a year. Nice. That's super impressive. From buying the car to actually completing the Rubicon Trail is about a year. Nice. And you guys might have said this already, um, but you guys were the first electric rock crawler to complete the Rubicon Trail? To fully finish, yeah. Nice. Yeah, we we haven't found any evidence otherwise so we believe that we were the first nice we found one group from i think new zealand they drove it but didn't complete it and turned around Mm. so i believe we still have the claim to fame that we are the first very cool very cool and what kind of suspension are you running in this right now you talked about it a little bit. It's a full custom four link, but I'll, okay. I'll let him talk about it. Yeah. yeah, we did a, a double triangulated four link front and rear, so a uh, long arm four link with coilover suspension. We uh, 
you know, it was a little challenge to dial in the spring rates for the coilovers to make this sit right because you didn't quite know what the weight was going to be and some things like that. And there's definitely some lessons learned about about fixing it so it doesn't have quite as much body roll. But uh, yeah, so it's pretty much a custom four link, lots of parts from different various off-road places and things like that. Right. Whatever you can do to make it work. Right, yeah. <laughs> Love that. Um What's your absolute favorite thing about, you know, now having this completed and functional? Um, like, what would you say is your favorite thing about the vehicle? Honestly, I just like having that instantaneous torque right away and then just being able to crawl up something in silence. Mm -hmm. I, I think just the uniqueness of it. We're not going to find anything else like this. And uh, very unique, one of a kind, and that makes it really fun. Or Team Squirrel Cage. <laughs> Team under, underscore squirrel underscore cage. That's named because the motor is a squirrel cage motor. Ah. That's a, a technical term, so kind of a play on words. We're, we're excited, and hopefully we guys we can give you guys some updates in the future. We want to, uh, there's some things to be improved on. Maybe we can show it off on a trail someday. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, um, cool. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Fantastic build that you guys got going here. So thank you for your time, and thanks for showing it off. <laughs> well, I don't know about you guys, but that was a freaking blast. I'm curious if you have checked out any EV rock crawlers or any kind of electric overlanding or 4x4 vehicles before. If you have, make sure you leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this video as well. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching, as always. I upload every single Sunday, and I will see you in the next one.